There we go. Hi, Diane. Hi. Um, I'm sure Pamela is coming shortly. There we go. Hey, Pamela and Diane. Welcome. Uh, yeah, great questions in the first session here. And yeah, excited um, for uh, Pamela and Diane to um, share their presentation, share, you know, what Coil Stalox has been up to. And also great to see their progression throughout the program and also coming out of some of our uh, partner programs here too. So I'm going to, uh, you guys have an amazing story. I'm going to, um, put it on active speaker mode and let you take it away. It's just hair. You should feel lucky to be alive. Meet Diane. She's fine now, but in 2015, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and lost all of her coily textured hair due to chemo. And those statements were made by well-meaning people when she expressed her hair loss concerns. It was important for Diane to look as much like herself as possible during her cancer journey and armed with a wig prescription from her oncologist and insurance reimbursement of up to $350. She went to several cancer center hospitals to purchase a wig, but Cancer Center hospitals only sold straight and wavy haired wigs. The lack of options deprived Diane of using her health insurance and robbed her of the resources, privacy, and the dignity that the medical salon settings provide. Hi, I'm Pamela Shattuck and Diane is my sister. We founded Coils to Locks, a social impact for-profit business to put an end to this healthcare disparity. Hair is an important part of a woman's identity and almost 50% of black women in the US experience medical and non-medical hair loss. One in three, according to the American Cancer Society will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime and a whopping 60% of black women experience high blood pressure and take medications that will cause hair loss. Market research shows there's an increasing demand from black consumers that is driving an annual 13% growth in the wig and hair extension industry in North America, the US being the largest market and black women outspend other demographics by nearly 86% in ethnic hair care and beauty, according to Nielsen. And this Deloitte research also helped us pinpoint key areas across the US for market growth in a serviceable, obtainable market of 6.5 million um, women of which if we captured 5% as we roll into a full launch coming out of a proof of concept stage, it would give us a projected monthly revenue of $20,000 per month by fourth quarter of this year of 2023. So wig distributors have neglected this lucrative untapped market in the cancer care space. And the few distributors that sell with black women in mind have limited and lesser quality options. The existence of coils to locks means that every woman, regardless of hair texture, can have access to wigs that resembles the hair that she lost. Like these ethnically inspired coils to lock styles. So we currently sell our wigs B2B and due to high demand, we very recently launched our direct to consumer online store to sell directly to women with all types of hair loss and to those who simply want wigs for aesthetic reasons. We piloted um, Coils to Locks in October of 2019, uh, just in three hospitals, four months before the pandemic. Uh, in spite of the pandemic, we had steady B2B revenue growth during this proof of concept stage, where in 15 pilot hospitals nationwide and plan to more than double that number by year end through focused and strategic business development. Uh, during proof of concept, we sold 230 wig units total uh, with repeat sales among most hospitals at an average price of $175 
uh, and revenue to date has been $46,000 in this proof of concept stage. And on the direct to consumer track, which we just launched, uh, we've hired an independent contractor to strategize and implement a digital marketing uh, campaign for us. Here's a small snapshot of some recognition we've received through major press and grant wins that we're really proud of and um, has helped us to accelerate the business. Our team consists of two cancer survivors and we have 20 plus years of experience in spaces like diversity and inclusion, cancer support, natural hair blogging and communications. How can you help? We've currently raised over $62,000 in an equity crowdfunding campaign on the WeFunder platform. Our ultimate goal is $250,000 and you can help us get there. You can go on over to coilstolox.com slash WeFunder to learn more and to invest. And the money raised will help us hire two business development team members to do outreach tapping into hospital networks across the country and into Canada. Um, we're currently in talks with Canada um, in their health, uh, throughout their health, health network there. Uh, and the money will also help support driving revenue through digital marketing efforts like lead generation and ad spend as we move out of our proof of concept stage. My sister Diane's lived experience was the foundation for Coils to Locks. It is more than just a wig. Every woman, regardless of hair texture, deserves a wig that resembles the hair that she lost. Thank you. Yeah, great job. Um, and we see a lot of excitement in the chat already about you know the amazing human need, traction and impact. Um, the inspiration on bringing up this important topic. Uh, if anybody has any questions they want to ask, um, feel free to either enter them in the chat or go to the Q&A tab. And there we go. Um, yeah, just to kick us off while we're waiting for some questions, um, can you share a little bit about the, uh, the strategy you've employed on getting into some of the hospitals already? Cause that isn't the easiest market to sell into. Absolutely. I can, I can speak on that. I'm Diane Austin. Diane, Diane, our inspiration, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so initially during this proof of concept stage, surprisingly for us, we did not have to do a lot of outreach to get to the 15 hospitals that, that came on board because they heard about us through um, some press that we received and people just started reaching out to, that, to us. And that is actually still happening. We're still in conversations with different hospitals. But we want to, of course, now that we're moving out of this proof of concept stage, which um, we um, have you know, flipped that switch at the top of this year, we're being very strategic. Right now we have two very part-time business development people who are actively reaching out to a targeted list of hospitals across the country. Um, and, um, and so we're, we're about to um, close on a couple of um, hospitals in terms of um, joining us for partnerships, but we really need to um, to increase our presence and be more aggressive around the business development. So we have a targeted list based on those target markets that Pamela showed you in one of the. And slides. that's the exactly, and that's the, that's um, um, professional market research that we got through Deloitte. Uh, we were lucky to to get that pro bono work done for us on market research. So we we have the list of we we have the um, the regions and the, the the places and spaces where our target market lives. Um, we have a list of uh, those hospitals. Um, there were. 300 plus um, hospital cancer boutiques and, lo and, and um, locations, medical hair loss salons, even more. Um, and I, I would say it would add another additional 150 plus um, locations to tap into. So we're, we're starting to work through, the, through that list on the hospital side. 
And I'll just add one more thing, Jason, and that is we have people um, reaching out to us via our website saying, you're not in a hospital near me. Um, can you get your wigs in XYZ hospitals? So we have a list of those hospitals as well. We have a web form where people can fill out and tell us, well, what hospital would you like us to reach out to? Oh, perfect. Um, yeah, and then talking about, you know, how many hospitals and opportunities there are here. Uh, we had a question on the total addressable market around your next growth stage. So yeah, how do you figure um, the market size and how many customers you can support? So yeah. I can, mm -hmm. go ahead, Diane. You want me to go ahead? Yeah. So um, we know that just based on the most recent U.S. Census that there are 24 million Black women in the U.S. We are also interested in expanding into Canada and Great Britain. But so you know, if you add those figures, there's about 20. Uh, uh, 26 million women in terms of the total addressable market. Um, we think that the serviceable addressable market is about um, 13 million, William. Um, yeah, women. just over 13 million, something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we think that we have a, a real shot at even, even if we, let me put it this way, if in terms of the um, obtainable market, even if we were to reach 1% of, of that <coughs> market, um, that would create revenue of over $11 million. Um, and, and that, you know, 1% is like 65,000 based on our price point. Amazing. Um... And then, yeah, highlight about, you know, you've generated a lot of great interest in the media already, and that was a really impressive slide you had up. Has that helped open doors for you and brought in new revenue? Yeah, definitely. Like Diane was was saying a little earlier, um, it really um, created a buzz and word of mouth where we had hospitals reaching, and still do, as you stated, had hospitals reaching out to us. So that that really created that initial wave of hospitals that came on board. Um, and it's, it's, it's um, driven revenue in, in that regard. And a lot of those hospitals, as I mentioned, have been repeat customers um, and, and we're still hearing, hearing from them. But as Diane stated, we need to be more, uh, we're gonna start to be more aggressive as we move out of this proof of concept stage. And there are reasons why, um, you know, uh, through the pandemic, we, we create, we, I think, created that um, consciously um, had that sort of slow growth um, because we were building it and they were coming. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, now we're, we're going to um, market more aggressively uh, and do more aggressive outreach. But um, yeah, the, the, the press really Really brought yeah, the and to I, us. I'd like to add. I mean, we were recently interviewed by CBS News, and that's um, the national news, and that's going to air. We hope soon. That interview happened a two week two weeks ago, um, because the story is resonating with people, and people are understanding the importance of it. We also were not able to say the talk show, but we were interviewed um, a week ago. Uh, for a major talk a, show, a, a major talk show, which they'll tell us next week. They they say they want us on the show, but we don't really know for sure. It's not necessarily a guarantee. They can fit us they us yeah. information. All of that to say, there's like more opportunities for us to, um, you know, get the word out that will help to generate revenue as well. Well, I hope, I hope uh, to tune in when you get that spot. Um, let you know, a lot know. of exciting, exciting opportunities coming up. Yeah. And yeah, we had a question on um, if you've approached or attracted grant funding or impact investors yet regarding your amazing work. Yeah, we have. We've actually had the, the pleasure of receiving just under $150,000 in non-dilutive funding so far. And we continue to um, um submit for other grants, um, some that um, have fallen into our laps um, or, or people just reaching out to us, inviting us to 
uh, because of the, our social impact mission um, to apply. And, and we've been uh, blessed for lack of a better word um, in either receiving that non-dilutive funding and, and uh, a lot of times the, um, the support, the business support that comes with that. And that has helped to propel our business a lot. So we'll and, continue and to I do would, that. Uh, yeah, but I would like to add that, um, yes, we've been very fortunate to get funding, but it's, I think, woefully short of yeah. what uh, where we could be technically. And we've had a lot of difficulty um, getting past uh, uh, where we are in terms of grant funding. We, we're in the middle of a WeFunder campaign right now where we've raised $62,000, most of which came from family and friends. We've been very aggressive about our marketing. And, and one, of the th one of our asks is if there are introductions that people can make in terms of um, those that are interested in social impact for-profit businesses like ours, um, you know, angel investors, people who, who um, you know, this type of company is important to invest in, we would love to, to get those referrals. Less than 1% of Black female founders get funding to begin with. So we're, you know, it, and that's, you know, a data point that is, you know, readily um, available out there from re uh, credible sources. And so whatever we yeah. can do to help um, spread the word and, and utilize networks to help us spread the word about this wonderful investment opportunity. It's yeah, not, you right. know, this is an, an opportunity to get in on the ground floor of a company that we see as a multi-million dollar company for sure, but we just need the funding. We need the funding to, to scale to where we know we can go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like any business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, dual benefit with, you know, a huge impact plus the, um, you know, financial investment returns as well. Um, and yeah, I just had a shout out here on glad to see Diane's happy and healthy and we're able to turn a pain point into a startup. And thank you. Other people. Thank you. I am doing well. I don't know if Pamela mentioned that. I, I did say that in my pitch that you were. <laughs> she's doing well now. <laughs> thank Perfect. you, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of your, uh, you know, your customer base, are they? Um, do you see your customers promoting that they get a coils to locks wig, or is this something they keep private, or how do you um, manage that balance? So, so one of the things we found is, um, and, and that we're, you know, trying to address is on the hospital side, um, because of HIPAA laws, we're not able to get a lot of information from the patients that are um, purchasing these wigs, whether they purchase them out of pocket or through health insurance reimbursement. So we did um, fairly recently start putting um, QR codes in the packaging with the hope that people will respond to a survey so that we can get more feedback in regards to that. On the direct-to-consumer side, it's a very new um, website. So we're just starting to grow um, that website. But one of the things that we will be doing as part of our, um, certainly as part of our lead generation um, campaign and, and then that customer engagement is getting more feedback. But with all of that said, we have gotten some feedback that we have found on social media um, of patients who um, have posted pictures of themselves in the wigs um, and who have been very satisfied with, with the wigs that, that, what, that, that they've received, so. Yeah, and we did have actually um, one uh, patient reach out to us, uh, she, Bought. She was a repeat customer. And then when we launched the e-commerce site uh, recently, she purchased another wig, reached out to us and, and gave a great testimonial, which she uh, uh, not only agreed to, to have us use her likeness and um, her, her words, but um, we also tapped into her for this uh, as a customer as the, uh, for the CBS interview. So she'll be a part of that as well. Amazing. Yeah, great to hear, you know, all the uh, exciting feedback and, you know, that next level of satisfaction where the customers are coming back, you know, they're telling their friends about it. They're um, happy to give testimonials and uh, great to see all the traction there. 
Can I just add one more thing to that, Jason? We get sure. unsolicited emails from women who, who don't even have our wigs yet, who say, you know, I saw you on the Today Show or I read an article about what you're doing. Thank you for doing this. Myself, my aunt, my sister, my mother went through this and I'm so glad that somebody is addressing it. Yeah. So we're getting that type of feedback as well. Incredible. Yeah, and in those cases, we do ask if we can use those um, testimonials, and some are, some agree to, to let us do that. So we're gonna we're gonna make sure we get you know some of that up on the on the website soon. And in our marketing materials, and, and in our marketing materials, yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, we had another question about uh, the revenue side. So can you go through the lifetime revenue and um, how you come to those numbers? So, um, so Tam Sam, some, those numbers like the, um, so to... how much revenue do you expect for a customer? Like, do they buy one wig? Do they buy? Okay. Got it. Wig? Time. That's what right. Sorry. Um, I'm a little nervous. Um, so what we have found in the data is that, um, our target market tends to be repeat customers. So, on the, the medical hair loss side, depend, there's some medical hair loss that is um, that can result in permanent hair loss or you know thinning hair, those types of things. And so um, we think the lifetime customer, um, is, but these are high quality synthetic wigs, which can last you know up to a year, even a little longer, depending on how you care for it. But I think per customer, we can average about, you know, three or four wigs in terms of, um, of, of that revenue per customer. Um, you know, of course, we would, um, we would like to be able to strategize on ways to, to keep that customer uh, beyond the wigs. One of the things that we would like to do in the next three years is to create white label products like... Um, wig care shampoos and conditioners for synthetic wigs that will help extend the life of the wig and help it, um, the wig to maintain its um, you know, high quality appeal. We also want to, um, because black women are very much um, interested in things like head turbans and head wraps. And there, we also know that not every woman wants a wig. We also plan on extending our product line into that space. So there are different ways that we'll be able to um, create um, um, value and repeat customers beyond um, the purchase of wigs as well. Amazing. Um... Yeah, so we have about two minutes left. I want to remind everyone that in the booth section, there is an option to um, click on the Coil Salox booth, enter and request a follow up. And um, we did have a couple other more, you know, feedback and offers to support from the audience here. So um, thank you, thank Gerald you Sparrow, everyone. Yeah, recommended uh, via the e forum. He has. Um, you know, a opportunity to connect patients through their, um, yeah, through their patient database, and also awesome. highlighted that this could also have an additional market for women with alopecia. Oh yeah, absolutely. We tap into all um, our wigs are for um, women with all types of hair loss and alopecia. Um, if you remember one of the slides uh, on the, the deck listed all of the the different types of ways that um, women lose their hair and al alopecia is definitely you're absolutely right at the top of the list great um yeah and then jamal recommended uh you know that he's happy to spread the word and awareness about the thank we funder you. campaign so great to see all the thank support you. coming thank you everyone that's awesome thank you yeah great job with the presentation uh you guys did an amazing job and incredible to see all the impact you're making here and we're excited to have everyone um, transition over with us to our next presentation with Aero Social. So awesome. thanks again for the great questions and interaction and great job, uh, Pamela and Diane. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody.
Go live button.